Brian Driscoll. Welcome to the show, brother. I'm excited to have you on here. I'm excited to hear about your story, what got you here, what led you here, maybe some pitfalls you've had along the way. But why don't you go ahead and tell our audience just kind of, uh, you know, your story, your back, your background. Yeah, sure. Thanks. So I'm born and raised in Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm a real estate investor and I also have about 15 years digital marketing experience. So uh, it kind of works out really well. I used to deal with uh, like large national, international type of uh, clients like big e-commerce. And uh, I, I started investing in real estate in Pittsburgh. I stuck up a small website, started marketing, and we crush it. So we uh, started helping other investors with doing their marketing there too, finding distressed properties and like motivated sellers, all that kind of stuff. So love just, it, man. Yeah, just working all the time, just like a lot of us. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, so, and what type of real estate investing are you guys doing? Are you doing wholesale? You're doing fix and flip? Yeah, I do on um, buy and holds. So okay. I'll buy single families. I'm usually looking for like three bedrooms, one or two baths, uh, looking for the families. I usually buy in around 100 grand. Um, we we'll usually just buy them cash, put like 20, 30 K into them and then rent them out. Love so, it. A little B B R R method. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, we get a lot of equity that way too. Like our last day we just did, we bought it for a hundred grand. We put 40 into it and appraised at 215. So I mean, it's like love 75 it. grand in two months, you know? Yeah. Love it. Love it. So, and, and in a deal like that, are you going to pull all the cash out? Or are you going to leave certain equity in there? Like what's that, what's that structure look like? Yeah. My structure, I leave all the equity in. Okay. Um, just because I'm kind of like a hobby, like uh, digital marketing is my main thing. Okay. I just like real estate. I only buy like four or five places a year. Okay. So, and I'm just mainly pushing cash to the future. Love it. You know? Love it, man. So talk to us about the lead gen piece. I mean, I think this is, you know, for me, you know, in my background dealing with this now for almost 15 years, dealing with different real estate investors, um, we're a lead gen machines. I mean, this is what we do for a living, but I find right. so many people that's their biggest challenge. It's like, I need people to call. Right. I need to get on the phone with somebody. So, you right. know, what's the secret sauce? What's, what are people missing that you, that you guys do differently? You know what? There's, so there's so many different ways to market. Um, like, like you can do mailers. I see guys doing text messaging. We do digital. So we do ads like Facebook, uh, Google pay per click and SEO. Okay. One of the things is consistency. I think you have to do something like even digital or even mailers or anything like text and uh, everything's going to work and nothing's going to work. You know, yep. like if you do it consistently, it's going to work. If you send mailers, you're going to get people to call. You're going to get deals. If you do digital, you might get more at a less, at a less cost, but they're all going to work. Uh, we found success doing Facebook ads, Google pay per click and SEO, because what it is, instead of texting and cold calling people, we're putting ads that are really direct in front of them saying, Hey, we're cash home buyers. Sell your house fast. They come to our site. They see that we're investors. And if they fill out a form, we're actually getting connected with people that want to sell their house. Versus us like prospecting them, you know what I mean? But there's a, so many different ways there. It's just the consistency is one of the main things. It's like, there's no magic button. You've put, put up a couple mailers and hope, you know, it doesn't work. I, I absolutely love that you said that because uh, I don't think that's where a lot of people thought you might go. Um, but it's so impactful, right? I call it your foundational piece. Like whatever you do, you have to do each and every week. Like it, like it just does not change, right? right. I mean, you make, make little tweaks, but you got to put the effort in consistently because in marketing, you don't, you can't measure results by throwing out a thousand postcards and saying, no, that didn't work, you know, or, you know, cause it might be a right. different week. It might be a different time frame. It might be maybe the, maybe the, 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 the postmaster threw the, threw them in the trash, which happens, right? right. Like, so consistency is really what's going to drive that thing. So I'm so glad you said that. Yeah. And, it's, and on data too, it's funny you just bring that up. So say, for example, say we, I just look, uh, I look at all our deals we get and, um, it's interesting, say even on, if you're doing mailers too, because I know a lot of guys do that, but on the digital, like we'll look at our Facebook ad spend. Say we get a deal today, we need mm -hmm. to look and see, okay, when did that lead actually come in? It may have come in four or five months ago. So you have to attribute that back there. So then you, you need that long-term because most people aren't like, hey, I want to sell my house. Well, some of them are, but a lot of them are like, hey, we just inherited a property. We got to talk to everyone with family. You might not lock that down for three, four months, but your, your dollar spent four months ago is what you got you that deal today. Absolutely. Yeah, so I, I attribute a lot of it to tracking. And then like you're talking, tweaking, like looking yeah. at the data and uh, making changes on what's working, put more money where it is and pulling it where it's not. So walk me through like a new prospect, new market, right? Somebody who's, you know, um, you know, coming to you, do they come with a budget? Do they say, I want to get this X amount of deals, reverse engineer, you know, some costing, like walk me through as if I'm a new client. Yeah, sure. So we deal with more of the experienced investors, like guys doing a couple of deals a month, a lot of flippers, a lot of wholesalers. Um, we usually recommend a minimum ad spend or minimum budget, of like three grand a month. We yeah. charge a minimum of 1500 to run like Facebook ads or Google pay-per-click. And then you have to have ad spend. Mm -hmm. And then we also ask people to stick with it for, you got to give it at least three months because you're, you're optimizing. Like say you stick up 10 ads. Eight of those might donk out and two of them are good, but we're spending the ad spend between the first month on all 10. And then we're whittling it down. Um, 
So that's kind of what it does. And so say a new client, say you came to me right now. You're like, hey, let's do something. We'd be good. We'd send you an intake questionnaire. You fill it out. That's going to give us like exactly the areas you want to target, what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll build you a website if you need it. Like a lot of guys don't have sites. Uh, we'll, we'll create logos. Like we do that all included. We don't even charge extra. We'll create the brand. And then um, mainly what we do is we build an account. We custom create ads for you. We push them out. And then we just analyze the data. Okay, this is working. This is not. And then uh, just keep optimizing, you know? I love it. I love it. And, and do you think there's a um, optimal, to use that word, right? Is there an optimal uh, starting budget? Like if somebody comes with more money or they're more experienced, is it a, are you able to ramp them up quicker? Uh, or, you know, is it is it pretty status quo? Like we have, you need that first month or two to, to kind of figure things out no matter what. Now, you know what? I don't like to get crazy with people's money. But yeah, if you have a bigger budget, like normally, like in Pittsburgh, I get leads. I know on uh, Facebook and Google pay per click, like 55, 60 bucks for like a qualified person wanting to sell their house. I always want to give the platform at least $50 a day to start. Okay. If, if someone has a bigger budget, we might start at a hundred. We're not going to go spend at $500 a day though. If someone's like, Hey, I got a $30,000 budget, $15,000 budget. Uh, we're using it to ramp it up just because we got to see how the market responds. So gotcha. it's kind of wasteful if we put 500 bucks a day in the first month, just because some of these ads are just going to eat up the ad spend. You're not going to get anything from. So I'd say normally like 50 bucks a day per platform, even a hundred bucks. Um, and then we can scale up once we see. And, and it's interesting on budget too. There's usually a tipping point. Like in Pittsburgh, I can only spend like 2,500 bucks on Facebook. Mm. If I spend more than that, my cost per lead increases. And sometimes it doesn't matter at scale. Like you don't mind uh, paying the extra the cost per lead because you're getting more leads, but there's always a tipping point in every market, how big the population is to how much you can actually spend without being a knucklehead, you know? Totally. Totally. You yeah. really almost led me into my next question, which is what are the secret markets right now? What MSAs are out there rocking? Where are people getting leads at a, at a reasonable value where that you can just crank leads? You know, you're yeah. having just a exceptional time. You know what? It's, it's funny. You asked that um, all across the U S is, is, it depends. Like say, for example, Pittsburgh, I can get leads for like 55 bucks, mm -hmm. but our houses, I'm picking up houses for like a hundred grand, something mm -hmm. like that and fix them up. They're probably worth like two California. We're spending like 150 to 200 bucks a lead, but they're like half a million, million dollar homes. Sure. Um, I know the places that are really competitive are boom is like Houston, uh, Dallas. Those guys are crushing it. Atlanta has pretty good leads, uh, pretty decent pricing right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Florida, Florida, we do pretty well at, and it all comes down to, um, the conversion rate too. So, I mean, the cost per leads, one thing, what really matters at the end of the day, like how many leads is it, how many, how much does it cost me to get a deal? Yeah. You know? So um, like in Pittsburgh, I know we got a 9% close rate. So one out of 11 leads were on average getting a deal. Um, so like on the market though. Yeah. I mean, I, I know Boise and um, Salt Lake city are like ridiculous expensive. Okay. Like competitive. Competitive. You know? Are you seeing, are you seeing, are you still seeing the right conversion ratios? Is, is the juice worth the squeeze? Like, is that, it's a tough market right now, or can you still generate those leads and make something happen? Well, you can generate them too. So on the market, like right now on the MLS market, it's, it's insane. Like every house is getting offers over asking price with, with the off market deals. It's nice because uh, we're first ones in most of the people they are like hoarder houses or uh, inherited homes. They don't have the money to fix them up. So these people are looking to sell at a discount in exchange for that convenience. Gotcha. So we don't really have the competition on that side and getting the deal. It's more along the lines of how many people are advertising and driving that cost up, how much it costs us to get that lead. Uh, but the nice thing is too, like, I don't think we're ever going to run out of people because the people that want to sell this month aren't prospects next month. And the people that aren't selling right now might inherit a home next month. So it's constantly different people all the oh, time. You know, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, there's, it's a, to me, I think the challenge is a lot of folks, again, you know, they, they don't, they don't dial in their conversions. They don't dial in their sales pitch. They don't, they don't dial in a lot of these little components. And then immediately they're like, you know, I want to go to a different market. I got to test something else out. I got to go somewhere else and test a piece, yeah. and, you know, and I think that that is an also piece of inconsistency that helps a lot of people, you know, fall flat on their face um, is just not going deep instead of continuing to try to go wider as if there's more opportunity wide. You know, yeah. the reality of it is some of these MSAs that you're in, you can go super deep. You can probably do a million a month in revenue, uh, but people want to pick up different markets for some Grass reason. is greener, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's a challenge to, to a lot of folks in real estate right now as they're trying to uh, keep up with the Joneses. You know, the big boys yeah. have, you know, five, six, 10 different markets and everyone thinks, well, that's the way to the, to the uh, you know, the promised land. But the reality of it is it's just your team's not built for that. 
These, these guys have been right. doing it for years and they've invested it in, in creating better teams. Focus on the fundamentals, right? You know what? It's funny you bring that up too. Cause I have people, I have some people call some of the newer guys. They'll call me up like, Hey, I want to do this. I want to, I want to do national. Or I want to do this. I'm like, how are you going to close them? Like, like yeah. do you, they're like, Oh yeah. Why well, I, I got friends over in that city. I'm like, dude, like you need to know how, like start in your backyard. Cause you got to look at these. Like I couldn't do national. I need yeah. to see the property because it's all on how you buy the, mm-hmm. when you buy is where the profits made. So Absolutely. like you got to have the proper teams to look at these deals. See, like know how much work it needs, all that kind of stuff. So that's a super solid point there because uh, start small and then grow versus all these other guys that like, yeah, let's go national. I'll get you a whole bunch of leads, but you're not going to do anything with them. You're going to think we suck that. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you can't work in an, in an area where you know really well, whether that's your backyard or maybe it's a place you grew up in and you don't live there anymore, but you know the area, every, every area adds new challenges, right? Now I need a new title company. That's actually going to close. I need to, you know, find inspectors on site. If you're doing virtual, I need to, you know, all these other things that add to complexity when the reality of it is, if you're not making money in your backyard or the area, you know, then, then that's where your focus should be. How do I start making money? Then maybe I can expand and go to a different market. Right. Yeah. It's funny you say that too. I invest in one zip code. (laughs) Like I literally invest I, somewhere I can drive five minutes to get to a house, like yeah. in my backyard. Yeah. So yeah, you can make money like in really small areas. I, I give you props for that, honestly, because I think a lot of people, um, they're afraid to get bored in their business. You know, you hear people yeah. say like, my business gets boring. Well, sometimes the, 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 the boring businesses are the ones that are really creating consistent, predictable revenue streams, right? And that's why yeah. you're bored because you're just making money on autopilot. That's the, that's the end game, right? That's what everybody dreams of. But we as entrepreneurs, right? We like to complicate things. And, you know, I say we work for psychos, right? And yeah. So we come up with different ideas and, you know, we throw monkey wrenches at our own business half the time. Yeah. I, I was told my brother, I was talking to before, I'm like, hey, if you want to make money, the fun stuff does not usually make, I mean, sometimes it can, but usually the fun <laughs> sure. stuff's not making money. The fun yep. stuff, do it as a hobby. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So, so Brian, what are some of those challenges? Maybe, I mean, you've grown this thing. Um, obviously you're nationwide, obviously you got tons of clients. What are some of those obstacles or, or like, you know, pitfalls that you ran into along the course of your success and, you know, maybe something that almost stopped you, but, you know, really catapulted you to continue to growth. Yeah. So I, uh, boy, that's, that's a good question. So, um, yeah, I've failed a lot in, <laughs> in, in the, in the progress, like here, a prime example, I got involved with, uh, real estate back in, um, it was like 2005. We were dealing with pre-construction real estate down in Florida. My buddy got me into it. And we were, uh, fly- I was flying back and forth. I didn't have any money. I pulled out a second mortgage on my house just to afford, I'm getting in this. Oh yeah, we're going to get rich, all this kind of stuff. Flying back and forth. Selling, uh, pre- it was in Orlando, selling pre-construction real estate. Turns out the, um, the one guy we were dealing with was a, like pretty much scamming people. Mm-hmm. I lost like 40 or 50,000 bucks on that deal. And I'm like, and that's a ton of money. Oh yeah. Uh, especially back then. I'm like, man. Um, Listen, that's a ton of money to anybody. Anybody listening to this, that's a ton of money. But okay. I know. And, yeah. and I'm like, I'm like, geez, do I even like, what do you even do there? You just took, took all this mortgage on your house now. Like I got to pay it all back. I was planning on getting yeah. a deal and oh yeah, we pay it all. I, I literally made zero from the whole deal. Yeah. So like, like some of them, um, I also was working one time. Like I just didn't sleep for like a week, break your brain, you know? Yeah. Um, so stuff like that. And some of them, like, dude, some of these hits took me like years to come back from. And yeah. what I always say is just try one more time. I like, guess what I always tell myself, like, I don't have to try 20 more times. If I fail, I just got to give it a one more go. I and eventually that. you keep doing that. It's like, you keep taking a baby step. You're going to probably, well, hopefully figure it out, but you're going to keep trying, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. On point, on point. I love you being able to share that. And I appreciate you being able to share that because you know, a lot of people can't, can't accept their defeats, can't accept their, their, their speed bumps and, you know, don't want to admit, you know, the changes that you have to make, but that course correction is so imperative to, to an entrepreneur's journey. It's like, you know, you you hit the nail on the head, right? You got to take the first step, right? How do you take action? Take one step, put one foot in front of the other. But I think the second piece that's so impactful is people take a step and they stumble and then they go, I'm not cut out for this, right? They don't realize that, you know, we're failing forward every single day. We're making right. mistakes. We're, we're screwing things up. We're figuring out along the way, um, you know, trying to get to that next level of growth. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's big. And anyone, anyone is still doing and is doing well knows that you just got to, it's hard. Yeah. Like it's, it's harder. You take somebody's like, you're like, dude, this like, this sucks. Yeah. But then it, you just keep going, you know? 
It's brutal. It reminds me of a meme I saw the other day. Somebody posted something along the lines of, you know, remember when you were a kid and you thought your parents had it all figured out, right? Yeah. And then you get to 30 and 35 and 40 and you're like, holy shit, I'm still figuring it out. And you're like, my kids are, you know, I got, I got 11 year old daughter and an eight year old yeah. daughter now. And it's like, I look back on them and I look at them and they, I look at and they think, Yo, dad's got to figure it out. No, dad's still trying to figure it out. Right. Right. <laughs> like, I think that's the, I think that's the lesson about making this, uh, you know, making this journey and uh, making it successful. Yeah, that's true. Like I, I, I saw someone talking about this before. They're like, uh, picture yourself, you're riding on a line. And everyone's like, wow, look at that guy. He's riding a line. How's he doing? And all your suit doing is sitting there. How do I get off of this? Thing? What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like all perception. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's funny. You mentioned that too. Somebody said this morning, um, you know, uh, every problem we have is a problem of perception, right? Yeah. Understanding that these problems have the ability to be solved if you look at them from a different light or you come at them from a different angle. And, you know, I think that's what we do as entrepreneurs all day long is solve problems and figure out a way to solve them more, sim more simply, more effectively, more efficiently, right? Just to move the needle. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's all problems. Like if you wake up, you got to expect like 10 of them coming a day. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, that, that's, that's, and that's half the fun of it too. Like, yeah. like, so, so it's like you wake up, I don't even know what's coming at me today, yeah. but it's going to be fun. And it's going to be work and a lot of it's going to be stressful, but it's always different. It's not like we're doing the same thing day in, day out, you know? Yeah, that's absolutely the best part of, of running your own business is having the ability to do something totally different every single day and not knowing what you're jumping into. And yeah, yeah if, if you're allergic to problems, it's definitely not for you, right? No, 100% so, not. So how, do, so how do people get involved in, um, it's, mo let me get, make sure I get it right. It's motivated-leads.com, right, is the site? Yep. How do people get involved? What do you what do you see as uh, you know? We already talked about kind of having a budget in, in mind, but in, in figuring out what you're looking for. What other kind of metrics do you really hope that uh, you know a team comes to you and has those things kind of locked in already? Yeah, so mainly like the people that we work with are either wholesalers, flippers, some buy and hold guys. A lot of the buy and hold guys are flippers, and then they just cherry pick what they want to keep. Sure. But but we mainly specialize in helping the people that number one have systems in place, or they can uh, they can close deals. And we did, we just connect them with the, the people that want to sell their house. An interesting, uh, an interesting point too, is uh, with the digital game, especially it's always a game of speed. So like mm -hmm. all, anytime we get leads, stuff like that, it's like, you got to call people quick. You got to answer your phone. So you, you got to have that in place. Like I was talking to one guy, he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, man, I can't close any of these deals. He's like, I call everyone on Friday from 11 to one. I'm like, <laughs> what are you doing, dude? Like you can't yeah. wait for and call one day a week, which, which you, a lot of times you can, you know, but not in this sure. space. Yeah. Um, yeah, but like the guys we help are just the guys start, even guys starting out that are doing like one or two deals up to, we got, we got people that got like 350 employees, yeah. you know? And then, um, yeah, we pretty much do turnkey services. So anyone that you don't need to know anything about digital, you don't need to do anything. We create ads, we do everything custom. We create your know, website if you need them, logos, if you need them, all that kind of stuff. So kind of try to make it easy. Plus I'm an investor myself. So we understand the difference between uh, someone wanting to sell their house or a motivated seller. Like there's a huge difference. Even uh, just say someone Googling sell my house versus sell my house fast. It's a totally different audience there. Mm, mm. Yeah, I love that. And hiring a professional, if it's not something you do, you know, I always say to people, focus on what you're great at, right? If you're a wholesaler, right? Stop becoming a marketer. I mean, we're all marketers right. in a way, right? We have to run a marketing agency essentially to generate leads. But, you know, I don't want to learn SEO. I, I don't know the first right. thing about SEO and I don't want to learn about it, right? I'm trying to find the best person that I can to run SEO for me that can get me great results. Right. So, you know, really staying inside of your unique ability. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And if anyone wants to reach out, yeah, that's our website, motivated-leads.com. So feel free. We can chat. Love it. Love it. So Brian, what did I not ask you today that you wanted to cover? Uh, well, mainly I'm here for you guys. Like, like, what do you want to know? Absolutely. You know? Yeah, no, I think, you know, I think you did an awesome job of, um, of really covering a lot of those, uh, you know, the pitfalls and roadblocks that, that, you know, people are looking for in the lead space. I think, you know, if you're not, you know, I, I'm just talking for myself, but you know, again, this is, this is uh, unsolicited advice for some of the listeners here is like, if you're not automating your marketing services or you're not outsourcing your marketing services, if you're not lead gen on demand automatically, each and every week consistently, to, no matter what your sales team looks like. Um, I think one of the things that, uh, you know, it, it could be helpful for you, but I talk about all the time is that if you have great lead flow coming and you're consistent about it and the phone continues to ring and your sales team is not capable of keeping up, that's a good thing. These are good problems, right? You actually yeah. want to have that because now it motivates you as a leader to go recruit 
more salespeople and to create more opportunity for yourself and for others, right? So getting that foundational lead flow in place, like Brian said earlier, I think is, you know, probably one of the most important things you can do as a, as a real estate investor. Yeah. And that's huge. And then I, like I was looking at it too, you, you can either spend time or money. Yep. So it, it depends on what you have. Like if you're just starting out, you have the time, you don't have the money yet. But yeah. if you're not, you got the time, you got the money and your time's more valuable. Like I know me in the evenings, spending time with family is more important than pretty much everything. Absolutely. You know? But back in the day, I had to work like, well, I still work like 15 hours, but I just wake up early now. But like back in the day, I'd be working until nine o'clock at night also, like working all day. So yeah, time and money, you figure, okay, I can spend money and get the leads or I can prospect or drive for dollars or whatever. Yeah. And, and I say the same thing. I think if you're starting out, get a couple of deals done, get them under your belt save that cash, but then get ready to reinvest it, right? Make sure that you're reinvesting it, the things that are going to shave time off. Because I'll tell you what, especially in the first couple, couple months of learning the wholesale game, you don't have time. You don't have time to waste. You don't have an hour to waste. You have right. so many things you have to learn, tools, processes, teams, scripts, deal flow, title issues. You have to learn all of that stuff. And so we only have 168 hours each week, right? How are you going to conceptualize and use, utilize that effectively uh, when you're trying to become everything to everybody, right? Uh, I think marketing is one of those easiest things to outsource right off the bat when, as soon as you can afford to. Yeah. So um, you led me into another question and I was thinking about this a second ago. Um, what are your routines and rituals that, you know, really create opportunity for you each day? You say you get up early, you know, is there some other things that you do to create high impact inside of your business? Yeah. So I, I wake up real early. Um, like a lot of times, like three, four in the morning, just because like once nine o'clock hits, I'm like on a rebound all day long. Sometimes I, it feels like I don't even get anything done because people just keep hitting me up. Yep. So I wake up early before most people get up just because I can, I can get a lot done in a short period of time. And then even with like one thing I'm constantly looking at while we're growing is who can I bring on board or who can I hire? Or who can I pay to buy some of my time back to do other stuff. So you, you can either be working on your business or in your business is what everyone says. <clears throat> like a lot of times, if I'm dealing with a customer service or something like that, I'm, I could hire someone. And, and, a, and speaking of hiring people too, I've learned only hire the best. Like yeah. if you can afford it and when you're starting out, you can't, but when you can start affording it, spend that extra money because if you hire good people with good experience, it's going to make your life easier and you're going to be able to deliver that awesome service. Yeah. Uh, but the things with me, like I like to read, um, constantly just be learning, like, uh, and learning from other people's mistakes or books or all that kind of stuff. And then, um, giving your team, your time also to train them. Like I have been finding there too, cause we're growing and we're growing at a like super fast rate. So it's all new to us also. Um, but like give given time to, to your team, give them what they need. And then, um, organize, like try to keep everything organized and buy your time back. So you can focus on growing versus like the mundane stuff. So many good nuggets right there. I hope yeah. people were writing that down. Replay that last uh, minute and a half and listen to it again. Um, from a leadership perspective, guys, so many good things there. I mean, buying your time back, 100%. Uh, I am going to disagree. I'm going to challenge you on one of those things you said, though, Brian. I think, right. uh, I think this is important because I talk a lot about um, creating belief and being a good visionary and getting your story straight and having clarity about where you want to go. Uh, and it's my opinion from making a lot of mistakes along the way, because this is how I start teams from scratch now, is that you can hire the best people in the industry if you have the correct story. I think if you have the right vision, if you have the right traction behind it, if you have the right conviction behind it and the right clarity and where you're going to head, um, you can hire people commission only. You can hire yeah. people. You're, you're probably right equity, there. Right. Like you can get the best human beings that are in your life to come work with you. If they believe in your story and they believe in your destination and you can get your outcomes to align with their outcomes. Yeah. Uh, I, no, I agree with you there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, like, um, click funnels. I don't know if you follow those guys. They, yep. they're, they're messaging a lot of their stuff too. So you find, you have align the messaging and everything. Yeah. Yeah. When you can align your message with their message and uh, you, you find the best people. I, I think that one of the other biggest challenges that entrepreneurs have is they have this scarcity mindset. If I can get it done cheaper, I should. And it could not be more uh, opposite than that, right? Most of the right. time, the cheapest one is going to cost you the most amount of time, the most amount of effort and get the least amount of results. Um, and I'm not saying go hire the most expensive person you can find, but find the best fit for your team, regardless of what it costs. Um, that if you know that they're going to help you create trajectory 
um, and, and create momentum a lot faster because that shaving time is where it's all, where it's, where it's all at. Right. Yeah. And you figure you get a guy that's like 50 years old or something that's been through everything. That's going to save you so much time because they've experienced it. They've experienced the pains already. So we can pay them to come on board and Absolutely. not have to experience as many of the pains because they've already done it. Absolutely. You know, it's, the cheap guys, you got to experience it with them. Yeah. It's why you pay mentors, why you pay coaches, right? Get some exactly. people who've have seen the experience and done the thing and tell you, Hey, don't go here, do that. Invest your time and money wisely. Um, some right. of the best investments I've ever made are, are into myself. I love the reading piece you're talking about creating better opportunity as become a bit, becoming a better leader. Um, guys, leaders are readers, right? The more that we feed our brain, the better leader you're going to become ultimately. Yep. So, uh, Brian, good stuff today, brother. What else? Anything else I need to cover? How can I think people we covered get in touch a lot. How can we get people in touch with you? Yeah, mainly just go to our website, motivated-leads.com. Just give us a call, fill out a form, and we can connect. Awesome. And if you love today's episode, folks, all we ask is go take a minute out of your day. I know it's difficult. Go in there, leave us a five-star review, maybe leave a comment on why Brian kicked ass and took names today, gave you tons of value. We love all that stuff. We, uh, we interact with our fans and we interact with the people who give us feedback. So i um, super excited to have you guys in there and, uh, and give us some good feedback. So uh, Brian, again, Brian Driscoll, thanks for being on the show. Appreciate you, brother. And uh, look forward to uh, hopefully you guys connect with some, uh, with some motivated leads, um, the motivated leads team and you, and you hire these guys. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.